Hi, everybody. I am going to talk to you today about how you could use the Action JSON API that's part of the Photoshop API. So, what this API allows you to do is take actions that you create in Photoshop, those that are saved as JSON, and then execute them via the API. Because they're JSON, you'll actually be able to manipulate the workflow. So let's show a quick example of how that works. Now, first off, if you want to work with action JSON files, not just regular Photoshop actions, you need to go to edit and then preferences and then plugins like so. And right there, you'll want to make sure that you enable developer mode. And when you do that, you will need to restart. Uh, now, I've already done that, so I don't need to restart. Now, the next thing is that to begin uh, creating your action JSON, you will go to plugins development and record action commands. Now I have an image open already and this is what we're going to work on. Uh, it's going to prompt you to save the file and it's action.json, but you can name it whatever, save it wherever. I'm just going to hit save. And then I'm going to do, you know, two kind of simple things to this image. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is a Gaussian blur, filter blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll just take the defaults. And then next, I am going to add a sepia effect to it. So I will go into image adjustments and then select photo filter and go down to sepia and make it 100% like that. All right, so now I'm done with my workflow. So I'll go back to plugins, development, stop action recording. And now what's happened is that that particular workflow has been saved to my file system as a JSON file. That means we could start using it in our code. And let's actually take a look at that right now. So this is a Node.js script. Uh, the REST API can be used in any language at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Dropbox. Uh, I have an image in Dropbox already. I'll show you that real quick. Let's double click that so you can see it. It's very lovely. And that's going to be our source image. And I went through the Dropbox process to get an access token, a key, et cetera. Uh, and with that, we will be able then to read and write from Dropbox. So let me kind of show you the code. Uh, the first thing I'll do is get an access token uh, for the Photoshop API. I have that function minimized there, but essentially it's going to take my credentials and then exchange it for that access token. Now with Dropbox, I'm going to first get a readable link for that source image. You can see that on line 45. And then I'm going to create a temporary upload link that will allow me to write the result. And you can see here I'm calling it source modified onejpeg And then here is the JSON that I created earlier, actually. Uh, but you can see this is the, uh, you know, what I did in Photoshop, my Gaussian blur, the sepia, and it's uh, it exists as pure data. Now, because of that, I can then make a call to the Photoshop API with it. So for my data, for what I'm sending to the API, I have my input, I have my output, and then I have the action JSON. And that's it. So I'm gonna pass that to the endpoint. This is gonna return a job. And what I'll do is I will simply keep checking that job and I'll wait a second between each check to see if it is done. And then at the very end, I will just share that last result. So if we go and try this, node, and this is test1.js, uh, we'll see it running. And it's done. It's really quick. That took about two seconds. And if we go in here in Dropbox, we can see it's already there. And it's got the causing a blur. It's got the sepia. 
So that's really cool and really useful. But what makes it even more powerful is the fact that because that workflow was just pure data, we can modify it. So in this other example, uh, it's the exact same code, except that I am getting rid of the first item in the array. I'm just you know doing a shift call to get rid of it. I could instead have you know modified the strength of the blur. I could have added something. You know the the workflow is now changeable on the fly. So all the code is the same except that my output URL. Let me scroll back up to the top. I am using source modified two so we can see the difference. And let me get back to my terminal. And now we will run the second one. So again, it gets an access token. It creates the job and then it's done. And we can go in here and look and we can see, yep, this has the sepia. It does not have the blur. So I hope this example was helpful. Again, that was a really small workflow. You could definitely do much more complex workflows. And again, you can modify them on the fly to make really powerful workflows.